Alrighty, here we go. We are going to be doing a uh, relatively short live stream today. Uh, what we have going on is a uh, demonstration of all the things included in this. This is the hairline dubbing uh, beginners fly tying kit. Top 20 patterns for the beginners. Um, it's a great little kit. Uh, comes with a little bit of everything we're going to need to tie some flies. So we're going to get right to it and we're going to tie ourselves two San Juan worms. One of the downsides to the kits, uh, and to me uh, really it's the only downside, is the amount of hooks that you get uh, in these kits. Um, but for a beginner, putting myself in the beginner mindset, putting myself that I've never tied a fly before, uh, this is what it is. It's enough to tie two flies of 20 patterns. So. You're looking at 40 flies at the end and uh, a whole bunch of learning experience. So we've got a couple of people tuned in for this quick live stream. Thanks for tuning in, uh, folks. So we're going to jump right on over to the bench and we're going to just start tying this fly. It's not going to be a long live stream. We're going to be pretty quick about this. Well, not quick, but uh, we're just going to tie two of them because that's what we have uh, for this uh, material kit. <clears throat> so anyways... Uh, San Juan worm, uh, the hook that it comes with, all the materials for this uh, video series uh, is what's included in the kit. So this is the wet nymph hook, size 12. We already got that secured in our vise. For our thread, we're going to be using the Vivas 6 aught and this is a red thread. And... Of course, we got to have the worm material. This is a velvet chenille. It's a small San Juan worm red. I mean, think about it. This pattern is so fantastic. Uh, it has its own color named after it, San Juan red. Something to think about there. Okay, so from a beginner's standpoint, um, you know, all the vices are going to be different. So. Uh, follow your uh, vice's uh, manual or uh, recommended settings on how to attach and secure your vice. And I've got mine. I want to make sure it's nice and level. Let's see if with the microphone can pick it up. Get a little tink, 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 tink. That's how you know your vice is secured. All right, so I put my thread in my bobbin. And one of the things that I'm always looking out for here is to make sure that my thread is coming directly off of the spool and directly into the tube uh, that extends out forward. Sometimes if you have this uh, laying around in a bag or box or bin or something, things can get bounced around and get twisted. So you just want to make sure that uh, is flowing free from the spool directly into uh, the tube. Now all bobbins come in different shapes, different sizes. This is what I like to use. And I'm gonna hold it between my pointer finger and my thumb, right where everything comes together. If this was a uh, standard bobbin, if you will, I'm gonna be holding it right here, right between my pointer finger and my thumb. And what I do is I use my uh, hand to squeeze, to add additional tension if that's required or necessary, if I'm not getting additional tension. So you're always gonna wanna have tension in your bobbin and the circles I like to stick with uh, they have a saying called slack is evil and that uh, stands true with the uh, fly tying aspects of it so um, how I start my flies I like to hold my and I'm a right-handed fly tire I'll hold this my thread with my left hand and my bobbin in my right hand and my hook is on the far side of the hook and I'm going to go on the far side I'm going to pull towards myself and this is going to get my bobbin going in the right direction. I'm going to start right up front, just behind that eye. I'm just going to start rotating around. And I'm covering this thread with this thread. All right, once I have about an eye's length or so covered, I like to pull on it and pull on it. Really make sure I have everything secured. And for my scissors, I like to go palm up, elbow in. And that way I can rest my scissors right on top of that hook shank, right? Nice clean cut, too easy. Now this is a super simple fly. This is why it's the first fly in the beginner uh, beginner fly pattern uh, category here. Top 20 fly patterns. First one in the book. Um, anyways, once we have our thread secured, we're gonna continue our thread wraps 
down the shank of the hook. And I'm going to take touching wraps nice and close to each other so we have a nice solid red shank. Now when I get towards the tip of the hook, move your thread around. Nothing will break your thread faster than the tip of a brand new hook. I'm kind of exaggerating here by going straight down with it and around. Once I get to the bend of the hook, I'm going to just take a little pause right there. Might even back up a wrap or two. Yeah, right there. All right, let's go ahead and get our chenille ready. Again, this is that red, or San Juan red velvet chenille. Uh, you know, you're just your uh, typical chenille. We're going to pull up another one just for uh, a demonstration purposes. But here is our velvet chenille in red. Now compared to, uh, what do I got laying around here? This medium variegated chenille. Let's pull a little piece off there. You can see the difference in the size. So San Juan worm, it's a little tiny worm. And let's go ahead and tie this in. So I've got the long portion of it facing all the way out to the right. I'm not going to cut or trim anything until I'm all the way done. So proportions, proportions, proportions. We're going to tie this fly proportionate to the hook. So the back end, the tail, the back half or a third of this uh, San Juan worm, we're going to measure that out one hook's length. So I got one hook's length sticking out from my finger. I'm just going to set that on the back side and pinch down on that with my back hand. I'm going to take my bobbin. I'm going to go up and over nice and softly. And now I can start adding a few more wraps with increased tension help lock that in place. Now this is a way to tie the San Juan worm. You know you can only, if you're publishing a book or whatever, you can only print one variation I suppose unless you have a whole bunch of variations. So you know this is this is where it begins. This is kind of the the base work, the fundamentals of how to tie and how to tie flies. So once I have those thread wraps all stacked up on top of each other, I didn't go forward or backwards at all. Everything was stacked right on top. I'm going to lift this up. I'm going to go pull that back and I'm going to wrap my thread forward now. Again, I'm taking nice close touching wraps. Working my way up towards the uh, shank of the hook, towards the eye. And I'm going to stop just, just behind the eye, right there. I'm going to fold this uh, material forward now. The same as before, and take one kind of soft wrap to capture it, and a couple more wraps with increased tension. All right, fold this material back, make sure that's nice and tight, and we're going to take a couple of wraps just like that. All right, so now we want to measure out about the same length up front as to where we're going to cut this. And if this was a one hook's length, you can just fold that back. We're going to trim that off right there. So now we got our San Juan worm ready to go. What we're going to do now is we're going to do our whip finish. There's multiple ways to finish off a fly, but I prefer the whip finish. I have what I refer to as the bottom speed bump and the top hook. I like to come up on the speed bump. I lay that hook down and I'm pulling my bobbin up and away from me. And as that rotates and becomes a triangle, I'll take my left hand, pull that down. Just get the material out of the way. We'll take our tip of our triangle and I like to go one, two, three full turns. And we'll draw that down and release the hook. Right, another alternate method is if you go down and around that speed bump, but you still want to make that triangle. Get the material out of the way. We'll do our whip finish right there. Two, three. Bazinga. All right, make sure that's nice and tight before we trim this off. Excellent. Okay, so. Um, uh, the final step, it even mentions this in the book, the final step, use a lighter and carefully heat the ends of the chenille to taper them. 
All right, so that means we're not going to come in and just blast this with heat. We're going to, or with the flame, we're using the heat. Use the heat, not the flame. All right, we're going to get that going, and we're going to use the heat to give it just a little bit of a taper. Just like that. I don't want to go too much into that. All right, same thing for this one. I'm going to spin my vise a little bit. We're going to use the heat. Just like so. All right, so that is one San Juan worm from the Hairline Dubbin Fly Tying Kit Top 20 Fly Patterns for Beginners. That's the first fly they have in the book. Uh, it's a really nice full colored book. How many pages is this? We're going to talk about this kit real quick. 57, 57 full color pages. Lots of materials. You know, this hopefully can settle the debate, internal debate for you of are kits worth it? Um, I will always stand by and say absolutely yes. A kit is always going to be worth it. You can always branch off and um, kind of march to the beat of your own drum, tying your own patterns. Um, but yeah, it's good stuff. So we're going to tie one more. Just like that. All right, so we're going to go ahead and remove this one and put it in our sample, our blank hook. So one of the things I'm actually thinking about doing is once I complete uh, this whole book, I'll have uh, two flies of every pattern. I'm going to put them in a box and I might use them for a giveaway. In fact, I probably will uh, use them for a giveaway and it'll probably be for my uh, special just for my Project Healing Waters uh, peoples. Because that's what this got all inspired. Um, let's see here. So it might look a little crooked in the camera, but assure you, I can assure you that the uh, hook is nice and level. And that's one of the key things. Fly tying. Gravity is our friend. All right, so let's go ahead and start this again. Size, this is the size 12. Size 12 wet nymph hook included with the kit. And we are using the red 6 Ot Vivas. Um, what's nice about this is I get to experiment with some different materials that I haven't tied with before. So um, I have never actually used a uh, Vivas 6 Ot prior to today and I actually kind of like it. All right, so we're gonna start our thread up front. We're gonna go on the far side of the hook and pull towards ourselves. And we're gonna go up and over a couple of times and then we're gonna start wrapping towards the rear, covering this thread with that thread. I have to adjust my bobbin, sounds like. Give that a nice close trim, elbow in, palm up. That way we can rest our scissors right on that shank of that hook. If you come at it this direction, you run the risk, especially if you have any kind of shakes or instability, uh, run the risk of trimming off your uh, your tying thread, and that is uh, counterproductive to what we got going on here. All right, continuing on, let's uh, just lay our thread base, front to rear, touching wraps. And if you notice, the, the hook is giving me just a little bit of a bend to it. And you know what that does is that gives me a visual indication that I'm actually using a, uh, a sufficient amount of pressure. So my tie-in point for this is uh, approximately between the tip of the hook and the tip of the barb. I like going through a couple of these that way in case I forget to say anything, I can, we can cover it again. All right, so again, proportion-wise, we want to measure the, um, the rear portion of our San Juan worm out at about a hook's length. All right, just about like so. We're gonna set that on the back side. Right, we'll do one soft wrap to capture it. And we can do a couple more locking wraps with increased tension. Keep those thread wraps right on top of each other. Nice and tight. Three, four wraps or so. You don't wanna to go two bananas on there, but once it's secured, it's secured. Let's fold that to the rear, and we're going to continue our thread wraps forward. I 
think it's pretty neat. Um, as somebody who's tied a, a zillion flies, you know how much satisfaction I get out of tying a San Juan worm. This is this is good stuff. All right, we'll fold this forward. And we'll just we'll just set our bobbins right up and over. And we want to keep our material on the top side of that shank of the hook. Right, a few wraps right there. We'll switch hands. And we'll take a couple of wraps directly in front. In fact, you know what I'm going to do on this one is I'm just going to use the weight of all this fold it back and I'm going to do my whip finish right here right now. Sometimes you don't necessarily need to trim off your material before you uh, finish your fly completely. Alright, let's do our whip finish. Up and around, make our little triangle. One, two, three. And then I'm going to do that once more. I personally feel comfortable and confident with my first three, but for illustration purposes, we'll do the three turns twice. Scissors, we'll get right underneath, nice and close, just like that. All right, we want to measure this front portion out about a, about a hook's length, so we can just fold that back. And just like that, our San Juan worm comes alive. All right, so last but not least, we're gonna apply some heat. Not the flame, but the heat. In fact, I actually, I'm gonna stop right there. So I was using my blue lighter, my emergency backup, but I actually have a bona fide San Juan worm tool. This is from Men Provisions, a fly shop in Minneapolis. Minnesota, but there you go. It's a San Juan worm tool. All right, let's go ahead and apply some heat here. Just enough. All right. Careful, always be careful when working with open flames. That is a San Juan worm tied directly out of the hairline dubbing uh, beginner material kit, fly tying kit, with the addition. Lighter not included, but I always like that little lighter for my San Juan worm. My San Juan worm tool. They don't, they don't necessarily tell you to keep a lighter at your fly tying bench, but it's always a good tool to have. So with that, um, stay tuned. The next video we're going to do will be a brassy. I'm just going through this book one page at a time. I am not going to put out a schedule as to when this uh, video series is going to be uh, originally broadcast like this. Um, but it will be over the next few days, uh, possibly a couple of weeks or so. I'm going to be tying these as I can get to them about as frequently as I can. I do have some chores I got to do this afternoon. Um, so this is the San Juan worm. This is for my Project Healing Waters participants. Uh, they each just received this kit. So uh, stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to be working our way through. Up next, um, and I'll put out a little bit of a heads up uh, with the live stream. Uh, but up next will be the Brassy. So let's go ahead and just wrap this up. There we go. Yeah, so once again, um, thank you all for tuning in. Um, be sure to join me next time. I'm going to throw this out there. Uh, I don't know when, uh, but the next pattern will be the brassy. So I don't know, I keep looking all over like I'm a crazy cat or dog, but it is what it is. Um, yeah, beginning patterns. Um, and just because it's a beginner pattern, it does not mean it's a bad pattern. It's not just be angled by beginners um, it's just a beginner pattern to teach us um, how to tie flies and um, dabble our interest in it so uh, thank you for watching everybody stay healthy stay safe happy tying and tight lines peace <laughs>